And now for the final feature. The final feature which I want to talk about is actually more than just a feature, it's a capability which, in my opinion, separates the, the men from the boys, if you will. Now, very few programs, in fact, only one comes to mind readily, uh, has this capability. And that is because most softwares out there don't really deal with very large models. But as you've seen, Commerces does so very easily. So perhaps you've guessed what I'm talking about. It is the new multi-user capability, which we are now branding as our cloud fusion technology. This is the first beta release, and we will be making it, making it even more powerful uh, in the coming months and years. Currently, it works on the LAN, the local area network. Uh, although any user can connect via the internet from a remote location as well. The basic idea is to allow many users to work simultaneously on the same model. So let's start by taking you through the installation steps because those are very important from the admin administration point of view. And then uh, towards the end, we will talk about how we actually use this fascinating technology. Now let's talk about the Comosis multi-user installation, the server installation. So besides your normal Comosis setup file, which you will have when you're setting up the system, you will also have this Comosis multi-user server installer exe executable. And what you do is when you, when you have this on your desktop or whatever, wherever you want to keep it, you can double click it to start the installation. So let me do that. When we do that, this dialog box opens up in front of us. And here you see the database administrator user settings. So we need an administrator, where, and this will be the person who will be uh, creating other users in the, in the database and will be assigning or can assign the roles uh, of these users. So uh, the name can remain the same, admin, and you can give the admin a password. So let's give it a password. And now after giving the password, you can press the next button. Now, right now I'm just installing this on my own machine, but normally you would be installing this on your uh, on the machine, which will be the server, which everybody else will uh, connect to when they are synchronizing their models. So this is the local path on that machine where the where the database will be stored. The database which will be which will hold all the um, all the information about the models about the multi-user models. So I can press I can accept this uh, path and I can press the next button. Now it asks me for the Comosis multi-user server uh, path and I can show the path or browse to change it and I can press next again. Now it's asking me where the setup should place the program's shortcuts. I can accept that. Press next again. And now I can press the install button. Now it comes to the finish point and I can press the finish button to finish the installation. Now that the installation is, um, is finished, we can go and find our recently added uh, Comosis multi-user server and click on it. Over here, it uh, shows us the server installation path and the, the location where the, server is, uh, where the server has been located, the server database has been located. And we can now use the admin uh, user which was created uh, along with the installation together with the password which we gave to enter uh, the program. Now, now, this is the, uh, the Comosis multi-user server manager, and you have three tabs, the users tab, the projects tab, and the roles tab over here. And we'll talk about these uh, in some detail. Uh, at the moment, if you notice in the users tab, there is only the admin user, uh, which is uh, available over here, and no other users have been created. And the admin now needs to create the other users, which uh, which will be actually doing the modeling. 
so let's say you have 20 people working uh, in your company what the admin can do is create these uh, 20 users uh, now on this uh, on the screen but before we talk about uh, the creation of users i want to talk a little about the roles tab over here if i go to the roles tab you can see that the roles tab has been divided into two parts on the left you have server roles and we'll be talking about the server roles and on the right hand side we have project roles so uh, regarding the server roles there is there is the admin level these are basically levels uh, there's the admin level which can do all these things so it has it can it can manage other users it can manage their roles it can uh, assign them to projects it can create um, new projects as well it can delete a project and uh, then there are 10 levels of access so there's user access level 0 1 2 3 all the way to 10 and 10 is the highest level anybody with an access level of 10 can basically access uh, everything so the admin is like that then there are 10 other uh, level categories user level 1 is basically you, you can change these you can modify them but we've given them by default uh, off the shelf these 10 levels user levels and user level 1 can create a project and has a user level access of 1 Similarly, user level two can create a project but has a user level access of two. And similarly, it goes three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way to 10. These are the server roles. Uh, they have to do with the server side of, uh, of the management. But then there are project specific roles for a particular project. And uh, in this regard, a person can be a modeler or can be a project owner or can be a, a merely a viewer at this uh, at this point so a project owner is basically someone who who actually creates the first instance of a project so for example if you are creating a multi user projects on which say 10 people or 5 people will be working somebody will create this uh, this commosis model and that person will be the project owner and this project owner has the right by default and you can you can, you can modify these but by default has the right to delete that project, to assign roles to other users to, uh, towards that project, uh, has a read access to the project and a write access to the project. And if you check the read access and the write access, uh, the owner has a read access of 10, project read level of 10, and also a project write level of 10. So the owner can basically read or write anything uh, on that project. That's, that's the way the project owner has been defined. Now, when it comes to the modeler, we see that the modeler is someone who's participating in the modeling. So they're, like I said, five people on the same model. Uh, the modeler is also working, but this modeler cannot delete the project. So the owner only, according to these rules right now, the owner can delete the project, but the modeler has not been given the right to delete the project or to assign roles to other modelers or other people on the project. But he can read the project, he can write on the project, and he has a read access level of 10 as well as a write access level of 10. So basically he can work on the project just like the owner can, but he cannot delete or, or add more users and assign roles uh, to that project. And then there's the viewer who once again, obviously does not have the delete and delete uh, project options. He can read the project and has a project read level of 10 so he can view everything, but does not have any write uh, level associated with him. So he cannot, he cannot change the model, somebody who's just viewing the model. Uh, but um, as far as viewing the model is concerned, you can view anything. Obviously, you can uh, change these numbers as well. Uh, but uh, the, the the difference between the viewer and the modeler is that the, that the viewer cannot um, write anything to the model. So these are the project roles, and these were the server roles. The server roles have to do with the management of the uh, of the project itself and the user levels in general. So with this information, uh, right now we're going to use the server role. So with this information, let's go back to the users tab. And as you, uh, as you, were, uh, as you know, we already have one user called admin, but now we can add new users uh, to this uh, multi-user server manager. So let's add a user. When we add a user, this uh, form comes up and we can give it a user name, call it user one. Uh, this has to be. Uh, this is. This will be the the username used by the program, and the user can have a first name. Let's call it ABC. Let's give it a last name of D. You can give an email address and a server role. The the roles which we just talked about, the server side, not the model side. 
the server side role what we can say is that this this person is a user level 10 so we can uh, according to whatever capabilities the user level 10 has been given so we've created this user one and let's add this user and after adding this user we can say apply changes and when we press the apply changes button now this user is actually added to the um, database the user's database similarly now we can press the add button again and the same form opens and now we can create a user 2 with a first name of def for example a last name of said once again i'm going to skip the email and give this person another user level of 10 and add the user and press the apply changes button now if you've noticed the i've created these two users as the admin because i logged on as the admin and the admin created the users but didn't really select any password for them uh, and the users themselves actually get to set their own passwords here is the what i'm showing you right now is the administrator setting up the system and creating as many users um, as will be needed uh, in that company uh, but the users themselves will then create their own passwords and uh, i'll talk about that uh, in a second so now i will talk about this create server registration file this is a file which uh, now the admin can uh, create for any user which he selects so let's select user one and say create the server registration file so this file has an extension of commosis server and it's been given a name of register we can keep that let's just change the location to desktop so they can find it easily and press the save button and when we do that this um, server registration file has been created so now that we have created this server registration file we can now uh, what we can do is we can uh, it's created a file and uh, we can send this um, this file to the users uh, and they can then use this file uh, when they're setting up the multi-user in Commosis. So let's assume that we have sent these the, the file that we have just created uh, to the users by email or it, it, it's, basically a, it's basically a file. Uh, and now the user is opening their Commosis application. So let me just double click on the Commosis application. And now let's assume I'm user one uh, or have one of the users. And when it comes to this, I when I open it, um, I can go to the multi-user um, option over here and here under the settings tab if i press the settings tab i can i now have the chance to create my own uh, multi-user settings so what i can do is uh, if you remember a file was sent to me by the admin uh, which was created using the other application so i can press if i can set, set the server from the registration file so it will basically set up everything which, which connects my computer to the server this is this is my machine i'm on i'm on the network and um, my the server is on some other machine but all the the connection information from my machine to that uh, the server name the server path etc uh, will be will be taken from this registration file which the admin sent me so let me just click on the set server from registration file and go to the desktop where i saved it go down and if you remember, this was the name of the file, register commosis server. And if I say open, then it uh, brings me the name of the server, which is the name of the machine. In this case, it's my own local host, but uh, in, uh, for, for, for a real company, it will be the name of the server. And it will give me the server path on that local machine, which the admin had set up. And now uh, I can, I use my uh, username, which is, uh, give, given to me by the admin that your username is user1 uh, and i can give myself a password so let, let me give myself a password again um, this, now so the admin doesn't really get to see these passwords but the user themselves get to create their own passwords and when i do that after doing that i can press the login button and it will create the connection to the server now uh, it says set new password again and repeat the, repeat the new password again. So here, uh, actually, it, it doesn't take this one directly from here. I need to uh, re-enter it over here. So let me do that. 
say apply and now uh, it is connected so as you can see the the icon has been changed from login to uh, from uh, to, from login to log out now that my multi user uh, settings are complete and i'm logged in i can go to my new option over here and create a new project let's call that uh, multi user one project uh, in my local directory and i just say create that uh, i don't want to save the existing one so yeah so this is the new project which i've created it's multi user um, project and uh, i can um, you know i am uh, this is this is the first time this project is being created and imagine that i am the owner and let me just quickly enter um, a few uh, columns over there uh, and now if i go in and um, now it's already it's it's saved let me save that now if i go back to the multi user option over here this this project is open right now multi user uh, project is open but if i go back to the multi user now you see this option of share model which wasn't it previously we had just settings and get shared project but now since we have an open model it it is giving me the option of sharing the model now when i sh when i press this button what it will do is it will this model at the moment is on my local machine what it will do is it will create a copy of this model uh, it will it will share this model it was it will synchronize this model uh, with the server uh, and there, thereby create this model on the server as well so let's uh, let's press this button when we do that we can give it a tag and a description and we can decide on a read access level and a write access level because i am the owner so if i give it a read access level of 3 and a write access level of 7 the users we have created so far are at um, an access level of 10 so they will be able to see it so let me just give it any tag um, p uh, doesn't really matter you can give a description uh, um, any basically every time you put it um, on the server you can give it a description uh, so let's just do that with since the first time you're doing it the read access level is three the write access level is seven and let's say share now when you do that Commosis starts sharing this model uh, with the server, and it's and it's done. And the moment this is done, if you notice, these two new buttons appear at the top, uh, which previously did not exist, telling us that this is now a multi-user model, and this can be we can retrieve from the server, load updates from the server, or we can save changes to the server. These two options will then synchronize this model uh, with. Um, uh, with, with the server so now we are in a situation where user one has created a, a model called multi-user one and has shared that model with the server as the owner of that project uh, so user one is the owner and user one has put that project uh, onto the server now if i were to go back to my uh, commosis multi-user server which we just talked about and open that again and once again i have to log in let's say as the admin uh, and I log in once again. Uh, when I do that, uh, obviously the user one, user two are, are still there. But now I'm going to talk about the projects tab, which we hadn't talked about. And if I go into the projects tab, you can see that on the right hand side, uh, previously there was nothing inside, but now there is this multi user one. So somebody, some of the users, which is user one, has created a uh, created a model and has put this put this model on the server. So what I can do is I can select this one and the moment I select it, I can see that currently the user one um, has uh, is associated with this project and is associated with this project as the project owner. So if you remember the project owner, if I go back to the roles, the, there was a project, the, there were project roles, which we hadn't, which, had, which we had talked about, which we, which we hadn't used. So the project roles are the modeler, the owner and the viewer. Uh, and since the owner creates uh, the project, he's been assigned the project owner. And now what the admin can do uh, is by selecting this multi-user project, he can say, let's add another user to this. So let's add another user, uh, say user two, and he can decide on a role and let's call him, let's give him the role of just a modeler and not obviously not the project owner. 
uh, and say user2 uh, modeler and say add user. Now when you do that now this uh, user2 has also been added to this uh, to this multi-user project and now we can say apply changes and now these two user1 and user2 are both attached to this multi-user1 project. At this point, the admin can inform user2 that you have been added to the project and you can go and access it from your uh, local machine. Now, let's assume we are on user2's machine. So this is another machine now, user2, and user2 decides to open his commosis uh, on his local machine. And the registration file, which we had talked about earlier, has obviously been sent to this user as well. So he goes to the multi-user one, goes to the settings, uh, he has this, um, he can get the server settings from the re registration file, but now he can, uh, what he can do is, if, uh, so this is basically my own machine, so I need to log out over here first. Assume that this is user 2 now. This user 2 also gets the same registration file, uh, which was sent to him by the admin, the register commerce's server, and it gets the, the local path. Uh, but now what he can do is he can say user 2, and he can give himself a password, uh, one, two, three, four, five, and say login. And this time, once again, it asks for the confirmation. And I can say apply. And now this user two is also logged in now. So now I'm logged in as user two. Imagine this is another, a third machine. There's user one's uh, machine uh, computer, there's user, user two's computer, and there's the admin's computer on, on the server. Uh, so now that he's logged uh, logged in, he can say get a so he can go and create his own project and he can become the owner of some other projects. But right now he wants to uh, get an already shared project, some some project which, which is shared on the server. He wants to get that, so he says get shared project. When he does that, he he now sees the multi-user project which is on the server. So he can click on that. And uh, it says select a folder to create the checkout model. So I can select a folder. Um, I can basically, I can, uh, I can basically. What I need to do over here is tell it the local path where the local version of this uh, multi-user model will be stored. So let's let's put it on the desktop for just to just for the sake of this video, and uh, say OK. And when I do that. What Comosis will do is it will bring in the model from the server. And if I were to double click on this view over here, you can see that the model from the server has been retrieved on my machine over here. I'm user two right now. And this is the way things stand um, as far as the model on the server is concerned. Now what I can do is I can add, uh, this is user 2 if you remember, I can add a few beams over here. And okay, this is my contribution to, to the model now. And when I do that, I can, I can save my model. Uh, when I do that, now if you notice over here, it says load updates from server and save changes to the server. I can, I, can, I can use my own save. This is on my local machine, but I still haven't saved it to the server. So if I say um, save changes to the server, if I press this button over here now, what will it, it asks me for a tag because it needs to first check on the server. So let's give it any tag which we want. Let's call it D1 description. And if you notice, it's not asking me for the, for the read write levels because I'm not the owner of this project. And let me just say save. Now, when I do that, it has put this model on the server now. So my contribution, the, the four beams, are now on the server as well. Uh, so I, I, they're the same on my local machine because I've saved them, and they're the same on the um, on the server as well. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, clo shut down this uh, Comosis instance. Do you want to save the project? I've already saved it, so no need to do that again. And re-open re, uh, the same application again, but this time as user one. So let me open the application once more. And now you imagine that I'm on the uh, user one machine. 
so over here, this is this is the user one machine, and this is where the it was on my local directory. Let me open that. When I do that, I don't see the four beams because this is the way I had left it. But the other user, user two, has gone in and entered four new beams. But this is the way I'm seeing it on my machine. Now, if I go over there, I cannot. Uh, I, it shows that uh, right now I need to load the updates from the server. So this one is on and this one has been turned off. So what I do is I immediately I press this load the updates from the server. Something has happened. It's not allowing me to put my uh, stuff on the server. So let me just press this button. And when I do that, immediately whatever changes were on the server have now been added to my machine as well. And when I can, when I see them and if I'm okay with them, I can just press save and now they've been saved to my local as well. So this is very convenient in which I've just shown, walked you through uh, two users and the admin setup uh, of the server database and everything. It's been, I've taken a while, probably 15, 20 minutes on this was, uh, the reason I did so was because I wanted to actually walk you through it. Uh, it can, it, it is not um, limited by two users. You can have three users, four users, five users, ten users, however many you need. Normally, you will not need ten users or more than that. Typically, in most large-scale projects, you're working with three, four, five users at the, at the same time. Uh, but this is the way you will set up the system. The admin will create the database the uh, the first of all like it will start off you will need to set up uh, the multi user uh, server the admin will create the database create the users send the registration file to the users the users will then uh, go to the multi users um, tab and then create uh, their own passwords and log themselves in the owners can uh, decide to um, create new projects and put them on 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 the server then if they have the rights, they can themselves go to the uh, server side database and add other users to the same project or the admin can do it for them. But once the other users have been assigned, they can then open uh, Commosis like I showed you, uh, log in to the multi-user server and uh, get the shared project from there and make their own additions or subtractions. Uh, what it will do is our what our uh, fusion technology will do is that it will merge the two models uh, in a very convenient way obviously merging models is a very complicated subject and there are always uh, there are always contradictions and those contradictions uh, need to be um, so sorted out with some assumptions and usually the assumption is that the person who uh, creates or modifies uh, lastly is the one whose ch uh, changes are then uh, implemented throughout everybody else's uh, model. This is, of course, a very, very simplistic example, but what you can do is typically with large multi-storied buildings, you can divide the building into stories. You can assign story number one to user one, story two to user two, story three to user three, and so on and so forth. And by using this, the whole idea is that you can reduce the man hours because um, what's, what can be done in a month, you can do in uh, in 10 days with with three users working on the same model uh, at the same time. This is a very nice technology to have. Very few softwares, like I said, uh, actually have this technology uh, because usually when you, we're dealing with very, very large projects, that is when you need this kind of technology with, with collaboration and multi-users working, uh, multiple users working on the same model uh, at the same time. Of course, uh, it is not limited to just entering beams and columns. You can you can make your connections, your macros, whatever changes you make in the model, uh, even drawings, etc. All will be um, will be brought together by the beautiful collaboration technology, the, the fusion technology which we have, which basically merges two models with contradictions between them, and brings them down into one. Uh, model which then all, all the users can can see at the same time so here for instance what i did was i added the four connections in the user one model and uploaded my four connections the haunch connections which you're seeing on the screen to the server and now i've opened the desktop the the user two model uh, the user two model is now open and uh, i just download it from the server and i can i have just down managed to download the four connections as you can see on the screen
now let me make some changes on the user 2 side so for example what i can do is i can go to my edit menu and uh, for example i can break this frame this one uh, say somewhere over here and i can create a splice connection for example between this beam and this beam and this is this this is the modification which user 2 has now made and i can save this model on the uh, on the user 2 user 2 side and then I can, uh, like I said, I can save these changes to the server once again. So let me press this button. And I can once again, I need a tag. I need a description. I can basically enter any description. The purpose of this is to um, have some sort of a tag associated with that change so that we can uh, review it later. Now that I'm happy with this model and I've uploaded it to the server, I'm going to uh, shut down uh, the user 2 commosis and open the user 1 commosis this time. And uh, the user 1 commosis just has the, the four haunches connected, if you remember. And I can go to my, um, so let's see. Yes, this is the, this is user 1. I'm all, I'm doing this all on my uh, local host, so it's a bit confusing maybe, but uh, you'll have the same experience with multiple users. So this is user one now, and this is what the user one is seeing when when uh, he or she opens the model. And now you can see this one has lit up this red button over there. It says you need to get something from the server because the server is different from your local model. So I just press this button, and immediately whatever was on the server now appears uh, on my screen. So I, I know what the other person has done. He's created a splice macro, he's broken the beam into two, created a splice macro, and this really makes things very, very convenient for me. To continue, uh, now I'm on user one side, um, as you know, and here I have made some extra connections by using the existing plates, which already existed from the other, from the haunch macro. And I made this connection, this different end plate, end plate connection, and I'm on the user one side. And what I can do now is I can, uh, save my model. When I save it, I'm saving it on my local machine, and then I can put it on the server. So I've made this connection over here uh, from the from this side, and I similarly made the uh, the other connection for this beam as well. After having made these two extra connections on the user one side, I can now decide to put them uh, on the server. Once again, a tag is needed. Once again, a description is needed, and I can just say save. And now it is it has been saved. And uh, what I can do is I can save my local model again if I want to. I can close my, uh, shut down my commosis. Uh, I don't need to save it now because I've already saved it. I can now turn on, go back to the user 2. Because I was in user 1, if you remember. And user 2 is the one which uh, is the model which is residing on the desktop. Uh, like I said, I'm working on the local host. So this model is now uh, being opened. Uh, by Comosis, and as you can see, those connections don't exist right now because they haven't been pulled from the server. But this button has lit up, and if I press this button, we can see that the connections. Uh, let me turn off the cuts so that you can see them. The connections which I made, which the other user had made, now appear uh, on this model as well. So a very very nice uh, feature to have this multi-user feature really allows us to work with large groups, really allows us to work with uh, large projects. I'm doing a very, very simple case, but the reality is you, you can extend these ideas uh, beyond the level which I'm showing right now. Uh, you, typically you will be working, uh, let's say five users will be working on five different stories, like I said, and uh, ideally what you would be able to achieve is something you do in 50 days, you'll be, you'll be able to do in 10 days. So very, very useful feature to have, and we really hope that our users will uh, enjoy using this, especially those working with large projects. One thing I would like to mention at the end is that uh, this server will be lying on the, on the local area network of the company. So all the users inside the company will be able to see that uh, server machine on the network. So this is the name of the server machine, and they'll be able to see it directly. Uh, and this is the path of the multi-user data uh, on that on that server. But if somebody uh, who is not from the company, is from another company, wants to join, then, uh, for example, they can connect through a VPN uh, server. As long as they're seeing the, the same server name and they're connected to the same server name, they don't necessarily have to be 
physically present in that in that building they can even be in another country and they can and they can work together with the other users uh, on commerce so this is this gives you the opportunity that while the the server has been set up on your local area network but basically as many users as you want from any from as many other co uh, companies as you want and they can be uh, in the same country or in a, in another in a different country they can all be working on the same project at the same time.